Welcome to UBC Arc Sockeye for Complete Noobs Part 2, Introduction to Sockeye. This video is part two of a two-part introduction to Sockeye, and I'd encourage you to check out the first video if you haven't already. However, if you feel like you want to jump straight into this video, that's totally cool too. So now that you have a basic idea of how a personal computer works, let's move to talking about the star of the show, UBC Arc Sockeye. To start off, UBC Arc Sockeye, known as just Sockeye, is a high-performance computing, or HPC, cluster housed at UBC and dedicated specifically to UBC researchers. An HPC cluster is a group of computers that work together to solve large and complex problems much more quickly than a personal computer can. One of the benefits of Sockeye is that the system is able to store very high-risk data. And because Sockeye is physically located at UBC, it can help you meet any on-premise storage requirements that your data might have. When I say an HPC cluster is a group of computers, I don't mean a collection of standard computers. Instead, the computers in an HPC cluster are minimal in that they don't have screens or keyboards and only have the necessary components to perform specific tasks. These computers are called nodes, and an HPC cluster is a collection of nodes that are connected to do big computational work. Sockeye has a few different kinds of nodes, and each plays a different role in the system. The first type of node I'm going to introduce is called a login node. This is the node that you'll start on when you log into the system. This node isn't for running any computations, but is rather a landing spot for Sockeye that can be used for writing your code scripts, installing programs you want to use in the system, and testing your workflows. The next type of nodes I'll speak to are data transfer nodes. As the name suggests, the purpose of these nodes is to transfer large amounts of data and files in the size range of terabytes. While you don't have to transfer data with these nodes, they're extremely helpful if you have particularly large files or a large amount of data. Finally, the last nodes I'm going to speak to are compute nodes. These are the nodes that run big computational analyses, or jobs as they're often called. Now that we've laid out some of the key computing terminology and concepts, let's jump into Sockeye and see what this all looks like. Starting with your personal computer, you'll connect to Sockeye through the internet. If you're interested in the details of how this connection works, check out the videos, Tools to Connect to Sockeye, and Connecting to Sockeye to get the full rundown of how to connect. Once you connect to Sockeye, you'll be brought to a login node. These login nodes function as a sort of landing page for Sockeye and can be a jumping off point to move to other file systems. For the majority of files and data that you want to use on Sockeye, you have access to large file storage systems shared between your team. I won't get into the details of these file systems in this video, but would encourage you to check out the Sockeye environment video for more details, or check out the UBC Arc Sockeye technical user documentation, which can be found in the video notes. In terms of transferring data to Sockeye, you have the option to transfer data directly from your computer or other source to one of the file systems on Sockeye. Or, if you find that your transfers are going slowly, you can utilize the data transfer node to help speed things up. For more information on transferring data to Sockeye, I'd point you to the video Transferring Data to get all the info you need, or again, to check out the Sockeye technical user documentation in the video notes. As mentioned, the compute nodes on Sockeye are where the computing takes place, and you can see in the diagram that there's a connection between your storage spaces and the compute nodes. To tell Sockeye that you want it to do a task, you have to give instructions to something called a scheduler. In HPC speak, we typically call this task a job. Because Sockeye is a shared resource for researchers across UBC, users need to make a sort of appointment to use the system, which can be done through the scheduler. The scheduler allows users to give instructions for how you want to use Sockeye, and based on how busy the system is and how much of the system you want to use, it'll find a place in line for your job to be run alongside other users' jobs. To find out where in line your instructions, or job, should go, the scheduler will look at how many CPUs, memory, and optionally, how many GPUs you'll need. You'll also need to request the amount of time you'd like your job to run on Sockeye. With this information, 
CPU, GPU, memory, and time, the scheduler will assign you a spot in the line. Once your job runs, your results will be saved to your shared file system. For more information on how jobs and the scheduler work, check out the videos Working with a Job Scheduler, Job Scripts, and Job Submissions and Monitoring, as well as the technical user documentation. Don't worry if there are any questions that you don't have the answer to, or you're still feeling a bit confused about things. This video is meant to be an introduction, and we've created a series of videos and resources to help you build up the knowledge needed to start working on Sockeye. So that's it for this video, and we hope it's been helpful. We encourage you to get in touch with us if you have any questions about Sockeye or any other of UBC ARC services at arc.support at ubc.ca.